Like, now there's lots of different ways that you can engage your audience and you're gonna have a lot of different formats that you're gonna test and see which ones you really have the most success with, which one you're drawn to, which ones you might wanna outsource. You might find that different kinds of, of funnels, whether you're talking about ads or webinars, emails, different things that you wanna work, you're gonna find that you have your favorites uh, and ones that work a little bit better. Um, you, you can have lots of different avenues of doing that, and we're gonna go over a few, but I'm talking specifically about email funnels because this works really, really well whenever you have access to someone's contact information. So if you are working with an existing list, or if you are having, let's say you're running ads to a lead magnet, which is like a downloadable checklist or something, and you wanna have proper follow-up after you get them to convert, this is the kind of thing that is just a natural next step. So for example, that might be a, a 10 step checklist or a how to guide or a free template of some kind. And that's your lead magnet. You're giving that away to somebody for free in exchange for their contact information. So you're adding to your list. Now, once someone gets added to your list, it's a natural next step to offer them more information, to get them to take the next step that you want them to take. And so in this case, we're gonna utilize our email funnels in order to do that. It's a natural next step. The other really cool thing that this helps with is, okay, so you might've gone through and validated your offer and that's great, but if you have extensive contacts that were not utilized for that, or if you wanna try and uh, reach out to those contacts again using a completely different email uh, process, this is how you would go about doing that. So for example, whenever I validate an offer, I validate something to about 500 to 1,000 people. And then as they go through and I'm validating whether or not that's good, whether it's bad, do I wanna keep working with it, when I go to my full audience, I'm gonna utilize the process that I'm showing you now, which is our actual email funnel, right? So we sent out validation emails, or maybe you did two-step posts on Facebook or LinkedIn and things like that. Now we're actually building this machine further. So this machine, if it's done right and it's nicely optimized, we're able to do a nice bit of nurturing through an email funnel, which would be a series of emails that are all pushing the same exact call to action to engage in your free training, whether you're calling it a masterclass, a webinar, uh, whether you're doing one-on-one -on -one workshops or whatever that might be, you're getting them into that, that masterclass. And then you have another another email funnel as a follow-up after they take that next step. So this, uh, for example, is pushing people into the idea of booking a call or if you're selling a software of booking a demo, okay? So this is what we're currently building. This is where we're at in this process, all right? And so what I wanna do is show it to you in a little bit of a different format. If we're just gonna say, oh, go write nurturing emails, what does that even mean? Like what should happen? The other thing is now we have this masterclass, you guys might have recorded a free training or like I said, like a, a recorded workshop or a webinar. You guys have this, uh, we'll just say masterclass right now. What do you do with it when you're not just emailing one-on-one? -on -one? How do you go to scale? How do you mass produce this and get people into it so you're not sitting there emailing people 20 times a day the same exact thing over and over again? We need to automate it, right? And so that's this is how we're scaling out that lead generation process. So what goes into that and then what goes into this, okay? And so again, like you might have a lead magnet thing up here that we're gonna talk about in a little bit that you're generating. This is that follow-up nurturing that you're gonna to use to get people to engage in hearing you present and hearing you speak and hearing you in, uh, interact with them so that they can then buy in and take that next step with you, okay? So let's look at that conversion path, okay? So this is breaking up that graphic that I just showed you into smaller, uh, more, uh, in the weeds kind of pieces, okay? So first off, let's look at the masterclass itself. What does that look like? So it's basically these light blue boxes into the dark blue boxes. So we have a masterclass sign up page, all right? So you're gonna have a landing page about what that masterclass is. We have a masterclass watch page. So 
there's no wrong way to do this. I mean, there's probably a ton of wrong ways. There's no right way to do this that I'm going to say this is the exact way that you should do it. Uh, what I like to do is pre-record a lot of the content that I have and I put it uh, embedded on a thank you page or a watch page on my website that you only have access to after you filled out the form on the landing page and signed up. But this masterclass sign up, so you go here, you sign up for it, and then you get to the watch page. Now, some of you guys might use webinar software. That's fine. Uh, if you wanna play the replays on different things, I've used different kinds of systems with like timed, time-sensitive webinars, and that's worked well too. There is no um, right way specifically to do this that was gonna work for everybody. Everybody's gonna have their own unique uh, process. The most simple way is to literally have a landing page literally have a thank you page and have it just recorded and live um, living on there. Once that landing page exists, there's a couple different things you wanna have or on that watch page, that thank you page. There's a couple things you wanna have on there. We'll get into that about what is on the actual page itself, but you wanna have stuff with like any awards you've won, any testimonial videos, uh, anything that backs up why people should watch that again or stay uh, in touch and take you very seriously. So from there, you're gonna get them to book a call or a demo. Now, again, sometimes this is gonna be a separate page altogether. Um, I typically embed it on the watch page, but that's okay. Uh, it's gonna be up to you, and we'll show you an example in just a moment, but you're gonna have that book, call, or demo, and then into the thank you or calendar page. Again, sometimes you can combine these two together as well, and that's just fine. It's gonna be whatever is most comfortable for you that your clients end up um, finding the most, uh, I guess the least path of resistance to get on your calendar. Whatever you do, just keep tracking it and you're gonna wanna like test things over and over again and see what works and what doesn't work. So that's what those pages are gonna look like, right? Now, how do we get people into that email sequence? How are we nurturing them? So once we put them in there, we have a series of five emails that we recommend. We do this with all of our clients. It's the starting point of how we take somebody from an awareness stage into a consideration stage to sign up for this masterclass or their free training. So again, this is different than the validation. That validation offer was just a test out to make sure that people wanted that masterclass. Again, it's not something you can forever sit there and email 20 people a day and respond and send them links and so on. This is all about automation. So once you have their email address, we put them in this workflow and we're nurturing them. There's about five primary emails that we're doing. The first one is an overview, okay? So this is really like an overview of what it is that we are trying to get them to do, uh, walking through the benefits of what the masterclass is and so on. The second one is a PAS story. That stands for pain, agitate, and solution. That's the process of what we're doing. We're gonna, we're gonna describe the pain they have, we're gonna agitate that pain, and we're gonna solve it with a story, okay, about why this masterclass actually solves that. The third one is who, what, why, and how. Very simple email, it's about describing who it's for, what it is you're doing, why it's important, and how you can actually get benefits from it. So it's another way of kind of presenting an overview, but it's a little bit more straightforward. Then we're talking about an email four. We're doing a before and after email. This is like before somebody who worked with you versus after what it looked like after they worked with you. So we're describing that um, that trans transition of where they're at before and, and after. Um, and then the last one is an urgency, kind of short email, last chance. This is the time to do it. This is the time to connect with us and so on. So these are the five emails that we always use as a starting point. You are not required to use these emails emails. This is just our recommendation for how to get started. Okay. You can use whatever process you want in this. You can not use our templates at all. You can completely uh, start fresh, but this is just the, the boilerplate that we like to start with always. And know that it's not going to work hundred percent perfect for you right out of the gate. You're going to have to tweak it. You're going to have to monitor it and change things. Okay. Then we get into the next uh, set of emails, which is down here. So they've signed up for the masterclass, how do we get them to book a call if they don't do it on their own? Well, we're gonna get them into some kind of nurturing engagement. We'll exclude BDR for now. That means business development rep or salesperson. So in many cases, you could also notify your salesperson and get them to pursue uh, with, with phone calls, interaction on LinkedIn and so on, on top of your automation. But what does that automation look like? So 
All these emails get them to sign up for the masterclass. They sign up for the masterclass. You're going to add them to a list so you can track how many people have signed up for our, our training. And then from there, we have another five email series that we're going to send out. The first one is access to the masterclass. And we're promoting, again, the probably the overview, some of the information that's going to be on the landing page. The second email is the problem that we're solving. The third email is about proof, so testimonials or proof that it works. The fourth email is handling objections for why people don't want to work with you or why people are hesitant to move forward. So you're going through that in an objection. And the fifth email is, uh, it's a sales letter. It's probably the most salesy thing that you'll do in this whole process. And all of that then to push people back to this page to watch the masterclass again and or book a call or demo. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, this is a very high level overview of what that looks like. My name is John Aiken. Thank you so much much and we'll see you next time.